Hello everybody and welcome. In this video we're going to use multiple computers to render out an animation saving us tons of time. It cut down my render time from over seven hours to less than 90 minutes which is a vast improvement on what I thought it was going to take. Now some of the renders that you can see behind the wireframe, the uh, look dev mode behind the mat cap, all that lot came out really really quickly. And I even use multiple computers just to get those out as quickly as possible as well. So whether you're using Eevee, rendering out with Workbench, and especially with Cycles, I hope you're going to find this really helpful. Let's dive in and find out the details. Oh, and uh, yeah, excuse the temporary working space. Okay, everybody, so this is where we start diving into the details. We've set up our scene, we're quite happy with it. A couple of things before you get going is to test your animation. So over here on the render properties, make sure you've got the, your preferred render engine set up. This can even speed up Eevee, by the way. Some Eevee scenes do take a while to render. If you can spread it out among multiple computers, that's even better. Okay, so further down here, we've got all of the settings that I want. I do want 500 um, samples in this particular case, but if I was doing a test render, which I highly recommend you guys do, is make sure you've got everything set up as you would do here. Set this render amount down really, really low, just for the test, but remember to increase it again later on. And then, before you go ahead and render out your animation to test it, consider lowering the resolution. Now, you may have detail in your scene, which means that lowering your resolution kind of doesn't work. If not, then go down a bit further on your animation. You've got your start and end frame, so we've got 30 frames here. Let's just whiz through that so we can see the car is spinning round. Absolutely fine. What we're going to do here is, on that tab which I've skipped away from. So back onto the output properties. This step here is really, really useful. If I set that at two, instead of rendering out 300 frames, it will render out every other frame, therefore 150. It's going to be twice as quick. Now, we're not going to use that for a full animation, but it's good practice to render out your animation at a slightly lower resolution, if you can, at a lower sample rate and with lower frames or less frames. So in this case, if I set that as 30 frames, we'd get every second of animation. It's a good point to check. Does everything work? Is there something horrible? Is there an artifact in there? Now, you're not going to catch everything, but boy does this save you a lot of time so whether or not you're rendering on your own computer you've got multiple computers like i'm fortunate enough to have here or you're sending it off to a render farm either a free one like sheep it or a paid one then you don't want to waste other people's machine time your time your money if it's a paid for one so we need to get, make sure that this is right before we go ahead trust me on that one it can be expensive otherwise let's set that back to one because i don't want to forget things Okay, so everything's set up within the file. Now, all of the computers must open the same file. Now, that can be that you mark it as read-only and open up everything as read-only from a memory stick and you take it around various machines. Personally, what I have is a NAS inside the house, so all of the files are shared like that. But the easiest thing to do if you don't have that bit of hardware is to use something like Dropbox, Google Drive, and store your blend file on there store and you can see here i've got a raspberry pi acting as mine store your output file in the same place as well and then we have uh, as you can see here, it's personal police car now there are some things here we're still on the output properties there are some things here that are incredibly important you need to make sure that overwrite is unticked that is really really important otherwise you're not going to get the benefit of having multiple computers rendering placeholders is really important and what that does is it creates a file a placeholder so that if another computer tries to render frame one it'll go no that's already there i'll try two. Oh, that one's there as well or three four five okay i can render frame five and then when one's finished or two's finished whatever order they come in they'll look and see if that file is there if it's not then it can start rendering it now, occasionally, even over the network, I've seen two computers rendering out the same file. That's more pronounced with something like Dropbox or Google Drive, where the synchronization has to happen over the internet. But it's still going to be a damn sight quicker than trying to render on your machine, just a single machine. The other thing to just mention before we go forward is that some machines will render really well using both their GPU and their CPU. The machine I'm on at the moment with a 3900X and a GTX 1080, 
that will render on both of them. It won't render as fast as it could if it was rendering alone, but those two combined are worthwhile doing. Some computers, it's just not worthwhile doing. One of the CPUs on one of the children's computers through there, that's going to take 20, 30 minutes a frame. I don't want it taking that long on one machine because it means if that's the last one rendering at the end of the day, wow, we're going to be waiting 20 minutes possibly. It just depends how it all works out. Anyway, with all of that set up, you need to open this on all of the machines. I'll go and do that now. Okay, brilliant. So that's all done. Let's go and start the render. So I've got everything all up and running on that computer. The next thing I need to do is go and open it up on all the other computers, which I've done, and then we can run around and press go. In fact, this computer is going to have its CPU and GPU being used. Now that is going to slow down both of them, but it's going to be quicker than not using both of them. That will change depending on your system. And as we'll discuss later on, the actual smaller computers or the lower powered computers, we're only going to use the GPU. So that one, let's go ahead and start the render process. Is it even on? Okay, so that one, the render process has started. We can dive over to the other computers now. Let's start with this one through here. Whoa, we don't want to waste any rendering time. I've got to get this done before the morning, of course. Excellent, so that one's just ramping up its fans now. That's the laptop. I'm not only going to get the GPU to work on that one. Let's go through to the other ones. Isn't that a good sight? <laughs> Three computers all run, rendering the same thing. Okay, let's get all of these going. So control F12, control F12. And you've got a really crappy view. How about this one? Control F12, awesome. So there's one final thing to do. Final one, now. Definitely has to be finished by morning. This is the living room. I'll get told off if I'm still rendering in the morning. Where do I put the wireless keyboard? Ooh. Okay, so ready to go? I've got the keyboard ready to go on this one. I really have to get it done before the morning. Um, I might have to stop it, of course, wake up early. Um, now this is running Linux, and of course Linux is slightly quicker, or apparently is slightly quicker. My test, not always so. Let's go ahead, render that animation, and there we go, brilliant. Okay, so we've got a couple of instances running now. We've got this one here, the three through there, the laptop and my computer. And I'll start up a CPU instance as well on that. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not bad, seven instances. That's gonna speed up my render time massively. I'll see you back in a bit. And here we go, we can see that of our machines, they're all starting to render out absolutely fine. Now, if you see any like this that have 003, but there's no image there, that may be corrupt. So just delete the file, and the great thing is one of the computers will just pick it up and start rendering it again. Now, I have finished rendering at the moment because I've already been through this process for testing, and what I've ended up doing is doing a daytime scene. We can see here if I blow that up, I've got all of the daytime renders. If I go to the Mac cap, now this is very interesting. I wanted to make sure that I could fade between those individual videos, and the way of doing that was just to render everything out, and then in a video editing software, I transitioned between those individual files. Of course, you could do that in Blender inside its video editor if you wanted to as well. And we can see there I've got daytime, nighttime, Mac cap, the video itself, the wireframe, which was fun to make, and the workbench as well. And that gave a really nice aesthetic to the overall feel of the car. Okay, so I almost forgot to show you how to render out the actual video. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, typically I will create a new blend file in order to just render out the video so that I don't change any of the settings and I can just render out stills from this file really easily. Now, the one thing to bear in mind is that we will need to make a note of how long our animation was because we will need to reset that up. So let's go to file, new, and we're gonna go to the video editing. Gonna make it nice and simple in our workspace at the top here now I'm gonna go ahead and just paste in the path to where my images are and I've got a series of options here I've got nighttime which is the one I'm gonna render out we can see as we scroll down here we've got all of those images that are ready to put onto our timeline now if we th well I thought that we could just highlight click and drag and drop and you just get the one 
here we go the one image coming up so let's delete that for a second with the x key so how do we get these down onto our timeline well let's set it back at zero or rather frame one and then go and add an image slash sequence now we can make sure we're in the right area and select them all and then add an image strip then when we play this back we can see it's actually spinning now take note here we haven't actually changed the length of our playback or rendering range which means that if we zoom out slightly we'll see that the animation keeps on going even after we've finished now we can change that in the lower right here we can set it to 300 we can also change it in a few moments over on the rendering tab in fact we're done here so let's go over there now clicking on rendering at the very top here the render engine and everything like that doesn't matter at all when we're doing this type of export now if we go to the output tab here's all of our settings that we would typically want to make sure that are correct so we've got the right range we're going from 1 to 300 but the frame rate is wrong it should be 30. so make sure you've adjusted that otherwise what you'll end up with is something that looks quite jittery it won't look natural it won't look smooth because there'll be some interpolation between the frames that you have and the actual output speed right the next thing is where we're going to output so now i'm going to just paste in my path there and i'm going to put in a file name i'm just going to call it test so i can identify it name yours what you want now the rest of this doesn't really matter but the file format does so we're going to change that to ff mpeg video and then we're going to go down to the encoding now a word of warning here don't just mix and match things down here they won't work if you do that but for this particular example i'm going to change the container to an mpeg4 or an mp4 and the output quality and everything else i'm going to leave that as is the majority of the time you don't need to tweak with this unless you really need to get out a different type of quality from your output anyway that's all done and dusted if i go ahead and render the animation we can see it's whizzing round now in front of us and look at the speed that that's going that definitely means we're not dealing with a typical render we're just rendering out rendering out those um, frames into a movie format and once that's finished we'll be able to double click the movie and play it back Okay, so with that finished off, I should be able to double click and there we go. We've got the test 0001 to 300 MB4. And that you can go ahead and share with friends. You can upload it to Twitter, Facebook, wherever you want to share your work. Brilliant. And this is the end result of rendering. Now, that actually saved me a ton of time. Using all of the computers, instead of it taking six, seven hours, it only took an hour and a half. Not only did that mean that I could turn off the living room TV and computer, so I didn't get told off in the morning for utilizing the whole house for my projects, it also meant that I saved myself a ton of time. Now, I know not everybody has those resources, but do make sure you make use of the ones that you do have. Even if you've got a computer that you think is relatively slow at rendering and you wouldn't want to sit there at it, that doesn't mean it's not going to be useful for an offline render like the one we've just done. It will speed things up. That's almost guaranteed. And if you've liked what you've seen here, I've got a course where I've created this in it. Why don't you check that out in the link below? If you want to follow me over on Twitter, it's at TechEdMike. And of course, a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see more great content like this. Shout out in the comments if you'd like to see some different content. I'm always open to suggestions. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. When I put the wireless keyboard... Ooh. How on earth? What? A few hours later... Oh, I feel a numpty now.